How do we get the next 10 years right? And I am so honored and inspired to explore with my fellow panelists here on the stage and all of you attending and viewing online this question of how do we build a digital world that benefits us all. We know that building a world, digital or otherwise, is part of how we can be the change we want to see. But even as we become that change, we know that we can't actually be the change we want to see unless and until we can see the change we want to be. That's where this panel comes in today, and that's where Leonardo's work is as the International Society of Arts, Science, and Technology. World building, of course, requires us to embody and experience and experiment, but it also requires vision, imagination, foresight. And that's what the creative visionaries on the stage today and out in, amongst us uh, will be inspiring and illuminating for us. With Leonardo, we've been incubating creativity since 1968. And we've been publishing with MIT Press since 1992. And now since, since 2019, we've been innovating with Arizona State University as an anchor signature partner, now joined by other partners around the world, including most recently Tsinghua University in Beijing. Now, why do we need to come together to create, to envision, to build worlds? Because this is how we can unlock and unleash a world that's truly regenerative, just, and vibrant. That's not just in building the digital world. It's an integration of the digital, the human, the non-human intelligences and species with whom we share this planet. With Leonardo, our publications, partnerships and publications reach people spanning now 135 countries around what we call the Leosphere our community of creative, hybrid uh, innovators who are the misfits, the masters, and the maestros, like so many of us at the cutting edge, the frontier of what we might look at not only as the now, but the long now in building a digital world that truly benefits us all. So one of the things we want to explore is how do we engage this creative enterprise of world building in a way that includes us all, that responds to and learns from us all, and reclaims the sense of us as all of us. This is the power of the collective. And the power of the collective is part of what fuels our partnership with our future life our attempt to mobilize across the Leosphere and beyond to help us see the change and create the pathways into our future life beyond what we see now into the long now, to create a world that is uh, generated by the largest global brainstorm we've ever embarked on. And uh, to share more about how we imagine and envision a call to crowdsource our future and who should be shaping that, why this matters right now. I'm going to introduce our panelists and share some of the uh, initiatives and insights they bring. So I'm honored to share the stage with my friends and colleagues, Meilin Fung, who is a digital pioneer the co-chair and co-founder of People-Centered Internet, the IEEE Chair of Sustainability and Technical Committee, the UN Commission on Status of Women's new report from this year on digital innovation. Thank you all. The People-Centered Internet asks you to see the change you want 
to be. Why? Because 50 years ago, Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn came up with the TCP-ISP spec which underlies the internet. Before that, there was no internet. There was a funny question on Quora. How did they run World War I without the internet? That's how people feel about the internet. It's like the air we breathe. But somebody had to see it before it could become. I'm originally from Singapore. People in Singapore had to see it before it became the miracle of the 20th century. And now here, the UK says, we want to be Singapore on the Thames. Uh, that's a big change. <laughs> so you have to see what you want to be. And this is the call to action. What is our future life? Our future life needs to be what each of us dream. And to pull all of those hopes and dreams together so that we can see each other's dreams and then develop our collective dream. The next 50 years of the internet, of the world, of the first time humanity has the chance to be connected instantaneously in space, is, it's a mind-blowing idea, and we want each of you to contribute it contribute to it, because the internet will be lost without you. It feels like air to you, but if we don't feed it with our dreams, we will let other people's dreams take over, people who perhaps want power or uh, want money, and they're not necessarily thinking about our families and our children and what we want to contribute to society. So this is a call for the collective wisdom, and um, I'm really grateful to be here. Beautiful. You know, the call for collective wisdom that you speak of as a way to aggregate and invite the power of invitation, our dreams to let the future of the internet, the future of a digital world, be fueled and driven by our dreams is central to how we'll build a digital world uh, for uh, all, that benefits all. And I think that's a, that's a nice way maybe to tie in with your work, Indrani, and I'm honored and delighted to uh, uh, hear from you. Indrani Pal Chaduri is not only a filmmaker, uh, but an activist and entrepreneur, the CEO of Shakti Regeneration Institute, and co-founder of Open Origin and Neuraline among other initiatives. I'm going to pass this to you and uh, let you share with us some of your dreams and how you're enacting that through this creative work. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here with you two brilliant women and with this wonderful audience that's gathered here to envision our future together. So this is some of my past. I was very fortunate to photograph and film with many of the legends of our times, from David Bowie and Iman, who discovered me, to Beyonce and Lady Gaga, and many other familiar faces. But for me, what has been equally or, or even more profoundly transformative has been spending time with people who are disenfranchised, with people in the Amazon, in, in indigenous communities around the world, and learning from them and seeing how our perspective, what we take for granted, this world with internet, this world with technology enabling everything we do, is a very new and, and perilous place from many perspectives. And, and looking at it from the perspective of the Amazon, where, where I was recently, I spent two months there, and the spiritual aspects, the, the connection to nature, the connection to oneself and one's own inner nature can often be overlooked in the world of new technologies and new ways to connect. So as a photographer and a filmmaker, of course, everything I do is based on technology. And we think of these as arts, but they are technical forms. So as we imagine the future, it's very important for the filmmakers, the storytellers, and in that, I include everyone, because everyone is publishing constantly on the internet. We've all become photographers, we've all become filmmakers, and we all share a massive responsibility, I believe, to envision a future that really 
allows for everyone to thrive, allows for nature to be central, because we all know that without it, none of us have any future. And I find that, I, I really believe that we have a pathology of imagination in our global culture. So many, I would say most films and stories, center around apocalyptic visions of the future, dystopian futures, or futures where it looks like everything's good, but there's some fatal flaw that's going to get you. And I think it's really important that we learn to imagine better and imagine other alternatives as well, which is not to say everything has to be perfect and rosy, but we need to engage ourselves in the process of imagining what it could be like to have a future where we do care for the poor, we care for those who are disenfranchised, we care for every perspective. So this is a, an image from my, my trip to the Amazon, and the spiritual leader there said, nature is what humanity needs. You know, we, we feel that nature needs us, but that's not the way it is. We need nature, and studies all show that without it, we all fall apart. So this is the tribe that I was working with there, and what's, what was really exciting was bringing them together with 120 scientists to engage in the X Prize, and we became semi-finalists of X Prize Rainforest, looking for biodiversity solutions, mixing technology, filming technologies mainly, using drones, using different ways of surveilling the natural environment, uh, turning on, on that environment what has been turned on us as humans so that we can actually know what's there. And it was very exciting to see these clashes of perspectives and coming together in harmony. And I believe that by looking through different lenses, by really embracing diversity, not as something that is uh, you know, something that we need to do so that we, we aren't the bad guys, but rather so that we can learn from those who see things differently and can therefore inform us. Women, people of color, you know, less than 1% of films and stories uh, and photography is by women of color, and yet they're the majority in our, in our world. So I think it's very important that we remember that when we look at images and films, that we are seeing through a narrow lens. And let's broaden it. Everyone has the great ability to create content that will change the world. So let's talk a bit more about how we do that. If we are looking to create a more imaginative future uh, and, and cultivate that sense of imagination uh, as an response to the, the pathology or absence or, or disease that, that is restricting that. Um, what are some of the pathways that we're finding most inspiring, most important right now, as we have the emergence of AI and other frontiers yet to be disclosed, yet to be discovered? What are some of the qualities and strategies we'll need to bring with us as we move forward? I think that the future we want should be where digital comes off the people, by the people, and for the people. The, the people-centered internet stands for the promise that it's not just about government of the people, but we have an internet of the people. In order to do that, there's a lot of concern about AI governance and how do we take this technology that could hurt us we should realize that our power as humanity has always been ourselves coming together. And so we envision that just like physics had physics labs, medicine has medical labs, where are our digital labs to measure whether or not technology is doing what it promises or is threatening harm? We envisage community learning and living labs. This is a notion that I've come up with with my executive chair, Yasha Stein of the People-Centered Internet. We envisage using artificial intelligence, using AI, to reach the 40% of the world who do not have the internet but have a voice, mm. who may or may not be able to read or write but they have a voice. Who may, not, may or may not have a legal degree or a medical degree, 
but they have a voice, and they can imagine the change that they want to see, and we want to see that. We want to understand what the people of the world want, because it's time for us to stand up for humanity. And the internet offers that. The internet offers the promise of participation for all. That is the dream of the mothers and fathers of the internet, but it relies on us, our current generation and future generations, to take care of that dream, to not lose it. In the West, writing was invented, and it so threatened the current hierarchies that it disappeared for 800 years. I would like you all to think. That if the perils of the internet today so threaten the current hierarchies that it disappears for 40 years, what would that world be like? And I want to say we have to care enough to envision a better future, so that the technologists and engineers, the digital visionaries, can take those dreams and help them come true. The internet is lost without you and your dreams. So, a couple wonderful pieces to un to unpack there and and continue the the the, the threads you're weaving.、Um, one is is the reference to access. The 40% of the population who are not online, who are disenfranchised today, that can change. We can close that digital gap, and we must. But wait, there's more. Because the coming together through labs uh, and through uh, diffused uh, uh, non-digital space as well will inform not only those labs and the digital world building, but our integration of the digital with the other parts of our life and our world,、um, and that matters. I think one of the things that's so critical about this pivot point. We are in a global transformation. Is that we know what's at risk? It feels so consequential because it is. So, Indrani, when you speak of the bombardment we receive of apocalyptic images, that becomes our fear-fueled worldview. And what I hear from both of you is an attempt to open up. Portals and a, a pipeline for for positive futures, for the voices that need to be heard and integrated to break that open. We're in this this critical shift in our world right now, from what we could describe as an extractive system that is fear fueled and fear driven. And our response to the threats we face today、uh, has been the same response we've had to our, our, our world challenges for centuries now, and it's contain, control, and conquer, and that's what we're teaching AI today: contain, control, conquer. And it will learn that if that is our primary message. So will our children and our future ancestors not yet born. I said ancestors intel, in, intentionally. The future, future ancestors, will be fear-driven unless we shift this paradigm from an extractive system to a regenerative system, a regenerative system that is about collective practice and the key drivers to empathize, create, co-create, and collaborate. And if instead of contain, conquer, control, we empathize, co-create, collaborate, we would be teaching the frontiers of AI, the Internet of the next 50 years, and all the digital world building that we are engaged in now a completely different paradigm. So I'm curious to hear from you, Indrani, how that、um, uh, aligns with what you're learning. And teaching through your filmmaking and these current projects, I couldn't agree with you more. I believe 
that extractive mindset is what's led us to the brink of disaster. And one thing that、uh, one of the indigenous leaders, Pue Pueanawa, said was, "Science without conscience is a disaster." And we have seen that again and again in our applications of science and technology. And so many people have experienced Western technology by being at the the wrong end of the barrel of a gun. So we need to recognize that technology is a tool, and if we can agree together that what we want is a regenerative world, that we want a world where people have their basic needs, where nature is is prioritized, where our views of wealth are aligned with well-being rather than accumulation and greed, then we'll be able to use technology in a wonderful way. But how do we get there? I think it's by imagining. So the reason I started Shakti Re- Regeneration Institute was because I really felt that both culturally and ecologically we need regeneration. And I've met wonderful people around the world of all kinds, of all places, who who echo this this idea that, that you know, what you just shared. And I think that that there's a tipping point happening. People are recognizing that we cannot continue the way we are going if we don't make the change. There is no future. So it's either going to be forced on us, or we will have to lead that way. And it's much better if we choose the change that we want. And I think that what we can do as artists and creatives, and I include everyone in that, because we really anyone who posts on on any social media. Is creating art, whether it's good or not, is a different set of questions. But, but it, it is a way of sharing with the world through visual representation, usually, and some some writing, what you believe, what you care about, what's important. So each of us has to take that responsibility and look at the world not only through our narrow lenses, but try to understand what other perspectives bring. And in, included in that is we need to be multidisciplinary. You know, I've I've been an artist for so long, but I've learned that I can apply my creativity to starting companies like Open Origin. Co-founding that has been really eye-opening because learning how to create green energy solutions. It turns out there are many solutions out there. So people can live in fear and feel like we don't have the answers, or you can educate yourselves、mm-hmm. and f- realize that we are living in a time of the greatest abundance, the greatest opportunities, the greatest technical capabilities, and it's just a matter of choosing what are the best ways. So I think that there's a lot of hope in there、yes. and promise. Maylene, I know you want to jump in. I think that it's very, very important that local innovation. Has a chance to flourish, and that is under threat today, because if you look at the stock markets today, 90% of the value in the New York Stock Exchange of the companies at the top are of intangible assets, of things that are not physical or real, and that shows the value of digital technology and what digital is. But if you take a small business, And they want to borrow money to start a sewing business, or to start a laundry, or a childcare. They have to put up physical assets to access the money they need to start the business, to buy the equipment, to hire the people. If we go on the way we are today, there will be no small companies because the value of the assets in the world will all be digital. But small companies can only borrow based on their physical assets. We have to change this. We have to help small companies actually be able to count their digital assets.、Mm. So as they're using the phone and they're taking orders, as they're buying equipment, all of those transactions are the digital assets for small business. So within. The German G7 and the Japan G7, the people-centered internet, has proposed the concept of digital utilities, data cooperatives, where we can actually start to let people put in a data bank, bank their data, so that that can be used for them to access the liquidity, the financing that they need to grow their businesses. We believe this is essential to decentralize innovation, to allow anyone, anywhere, to realize their dreams. 
but it does start with a vision. See the change you want to be. Then tell other people. Hmm. Get their help. Get their ideas. Get their feedback, whether it's good yeah. or not. It's going to make your idea stronger, and together we can change the world. But first, you've got to see the idea and be driven by your dream. At, so, the, at the age of 14 in mm. Singapore, I realized that digital technology was going to change everything, and I have followed that dream for over 50 years. What it has done for me to follow a single dream is to acquire the knowledge, the networks, the intuition, the ideas, the friends. To actually begin to realize this possibility that, in fact, anywhere in the world can be a Singapore. The only asset Singapore has is people. People is all we need to have our dreams and to make them real. We can realize the impossible. And to do that, we need hope. We need hope. Hope is what we will counter the fear. Fueled system with, so that we have new financial innovative systems that that increase access, so that we have new ways of being in the world and looking at the world and seeing the world, not only to see the change we want to be, but to enact that, to share that. Hope is the antidote and the inoculation to fear. So um, I'm going to uh, wrap us up. With a project I've been working on in collaboration with my uh, partner and、uh, husband, Bill Aiton,、um, who's here today, and attempt to,、uh, uh, to to have hope spread virally through what we call Constellation XR, using the power of imagination and technology to create digital portals. Through public art, through、uh, augmented reality, as a global AR public art installation, the first of its kind to wrap the planet with a series of networked constellation,、uh, constellations of art experiences and environments accessible to all, so that we can connect people with the shared intention to heal, as it was introduced. To the world last week at the Digital Arts Festival Ars Electronica in Linz, Austria, we are、uh, sharing here the reclaim of our intention to heal and invoke hope with art and digital imagination. Looking at heal as an acronym of hope, empathy, awe, and love.、And、we're going to leave you today and close this session. On building a digital world that benefits all, with a gift of free access to all attending or viewing COGX 2023 and the session on building digital world that benefits us all, so that you can activate your own constellation XR and begin that process to heal, to imagine, to build. A collective future that benefits us all, and I thank you so much. Thank you.